Hello, how are you? It's me, it's Steph. We're about to do some sewing. I just got back from uni and there's so many other things I should be doing, but I feel like sewing. Hello. So today I'm gonna to be making some little uh, thingies to like hold oven trays with. I'm just gonna Zoidberg for a bit. I have never owned oven mitts and I thought about making oven mitts because whenever we get things out of the oven, uh, we just do the, uh, the old get the tea towel and fold it over a lot of times and then kind of grab the thingy. And I gotta say, it's not the most effective thing and I'm always a little bit worried that I'm going to burn myself. So I want to make, I believe they're called pot holders. Not that I hold that many pots because I have hands made of leather after years and years of working in hospitality. But my husband on the other hand has very soft, supple hands because all he does is type on a computer all day long. That's not a dig at him. He works very hard. <laughs> in the future, I'm making a quilted jacket. I don't know when I'm gonna have time to do it, but I've never quilted anything before, so I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to practice doing a bit of quilting with my machine. So I have absolutely no experience with quilting, apart from the fact that my mother makes lots of quilts. I don't have any wadding to put inside the pot holders to insulate it. I thought about using the old tea towel that got destroyed as the sort of filler. But then I discovered for some reason we have like a bajillion meters of felt. So I feel like felt can be used in quilting. I Googled it, I definitely Googled it. And I don't really know why we have so much of this. So I'm gonna give it a go with making these pot holders. I think I'm gonna use two layers of this in between. So the only things I'm using are the fabric, the felt, and I think I'm gonna use just some bias binding that I have in my stash, or I might attempt to make some of my own. So it is also a special feature that I'm adding to these pot holders that I think I haven't seen anywhere else. Maybe I'll have to put a patent in so that other people don't steal it. Or you guys can just do it, because you can only do it though if you subscribe. Subscribe first and then steal my little trick. Let's dive in. I want to say that I'm sorry for always making these videos at night time, but I just don't have enough time during the daytime to make them, and I know that the lighting is a bit shit. I apologize. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to be using this offcut, which I'm going to measure. It is approximately 5.5 inches. It's like five and a half inches wide, which is 14 centimeters or 140 mil for the architects out there. I know you're watching. Maybe I will use the other fabric just so they can be bigger. Yeah. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm reverting to plan A and I'm gonna make it using this fabric. This fabric is a cotton drill, which is actually quite thick and probably more fit for purpose than this quilting fabric. So, sorry vegetables, you're gonna have to find another, another application. Hello, it's voiceover Steph. To test how big I needed to make them, I just folded them into a square and compared to the size of my hand, they ended up being about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, which is just shy of eight inches if you're using inches. Hello. The benefit of having a cutting mat is that when you're cutting a straight line, you can take your ruler or whatever edge and line it up with the line beyond where your fabric is or whatever you're cutting. Maybe you're cutting paper. And if you line that up outside of the zone and then you, you know that that measurement's gonna carry on through. So I'm just gonna do that. Just gonna fuck that piece off. So here I am putting my nifty trick to the test and just cutting out a big strip that's 20 centimeters and then cutting that into a square. I'm gonna make it two of these, but I'm gonna cut six squares. That might be curious to you, so make sure you keep watching so you find out why I'm cutting six rather than four, because you'd think I'd only need four, but I'm not using four, I'm using six. Yeah. Thank you. 
When I was done with the fabric, I did exactly the same with the felt. I leveled up the edge. I cut a 20 centimeter wide strip and then I cut out a bunch of 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter squares. I didn't know how many I would need, so I just cut a bunch and decided uh -huh. to figure that out when I got to that step. Also, you don't need any fancy tools to cut these things out. You can just use a regular ruler, a regular pair of scissors. I just have collected a bunch of sewing related items over the years. Please excuse all the mess that I'm trying to block out of the background. We're moving house soon and yeah, we've started packing because that's happening in a week or so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my base piece sandwich, my felt in between. I feel like that's way too thick. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do two pieces of felt after all that. I'm gonna sandwich that all together and I'm gonna baste. I'm gonna baste these pieces together before I quilt them. Basting is just a way of holding fabric together before you make the final stitch. I often skip the basting step on a lot of things I make and then things slip and I ruin them. So I'm not gonna skip on the basting this time and I'm actually gonna hand baste. So what that means is just basically doing a couple of long stitches to hold all the pieces together while you kind of take do another step. So to base something, you need a hand needle and just some thread. And then I'm gonna start at the right-hand side and work left because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, I would say start at the left and work right. I just remembered that I own. Oh, very nice. I finally bought some of these little clippies that I was seeing all over sewing Instagram. And they, I think they're, I think they are actually like quilters clips so you can kind of hold, hold the edge together. But if you don't have clips, I recommend doing the, the basting method. Actually, try and keep this in the shot. So that is what I'm doing to hold all my pieces together, the sandwich together while I quilt the front. And for the quilting part, I am going to use my ruler and I'm gonna draw some diagonal lines and then some crisscross lines over the top as a stitching line to follow. And then I'm gonna quilt, machine stitch that. I'm gonna machine quilt it on the, on the, <laughs> on the sewing machine, of course. I feel like a traditional quilt is sort of, you know, a square pattern. I want to do something different. I think I'm going to go for like a 30 degree angle. So that it's, so it's just like something a little different. And I'm going to use my cutting mat again as a guide to help me make those lines. So I'm going to show you how I do that. The cutting mat that I own is actually one that's used for quilting. So it comes with these markings on it that have 45 degree angle lines and 30 degree angle lines in this sort of detailed square in the sort of center there that you can see. So I'm just using that as my guideline, similar to how I made the straight cuts before. And then I'm just using the edge of my ruler to mark out with my fabric pen, those angled lines. I think I spaced them apart by one inch. Can't remember. And I ended up with this sort of Christmas ham pattern, which I thought was pretty cool, but I did live to regret. So stay tuned to find out why I regret it. I look very yellow in this light. I can't seem to get anything right tonight. I have never quilted anything before. I think I mentioned that a couple of times. So I don't really know what I'm doing other than I know that quilting is just kind of making a bunch of lines to hold a big wad of stuff together. I am not using any fancy settings. I'm just gonna go on my machine. Running out of white thread, risky. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do some straight stitches following the lines that have basically vanished from the markings I made. That's just, that's just great. Anyway, let's get, let's get started. You think I would have learned how to actually record videos by now? Sorry for this shot. No. That was so satisfying. There is seriously nothing more satisfying than sewing together a big fat wad of fabric. Oh, that was great. My fabric pen lines had faded, so I actually ended up transferring all of the markings again using chalk. And then I quilted both of the thingy doodads and yeah, I had a really nice time doing it. All right, I have quilted one of them and oh my God, that was so satisfying. Look at that. It's so nice. Probably that was a bit of overkill, a bit of overkill on the quilting, how much quilting I did. 
Um, but I wanted to just talk through the next thing that I'm going to do, which is going to involve the extra square. This is the extra square. I kind of just, I just want to kind of wrap this up. The footy starts in exactly 40 minutes and I want to watch the footy. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, um, let's, let's show you what I'm going to do. So the thing, the, the, the thing that I worry about when you're kind of getting stuff out of the oven is that if you're just holding it like this, like it can slippity doo out of your hand. So I had an idea that if I make a little pocket that goes in one of the corners. So if I take my square and I get my extra square, I'm going to fold it in half diagonally and I'm going to, I'm just going to clip it to show you guys what I mean. So that's why I, I quilted this before I decided to do the rest. So if I clip that on there, then there's a little pocket for your hand to slide in. A little bit more security when you're, when you're getting things out of the oven or dealing with a pot, if that's what, you, if that's what you, you're doing. That's that step. That's, I think I'm gonna patent this. So I've decided I'm too lazy to make bias tape and I'm brainstorming alternatives. And I found this ribbon, so I'm thinking of using this ribbon, but I don't have enough to do both. So I'm just going to use two different types of ribbon. You know what? I think that actually looks really pretty. I think I'm going to use ribbon. Okay, I'm going to watch the footy now and then I'm going to finish this off later. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, for me, it's going to be a while for you. It's not going to be very long at all. All right. It's half time in the footy, the swans are up by three points. Half time in the footy usually goes for about half an hour, so I'm gonna see if I can finish off this little thingamajig. I'm also drinking wine. So what I'm gonna do is use the ribbon around the edge instead of bias tape. I'm gonna try and find uh, some thread that might kind of match a little better than just using white, but the first thing I need to do is not that, I need to add my little diagonal bits. So to do that, I'm just going to get my diagonal piece. It's not exactly square, it doesn't matter that much. And I'm just gonna line it up on my, my little square. And I'm just gonna clip it. And then I'm gonna sew just along the edge, secure it all at the edge before I put on the ribbon around the outside. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm going to reiterate that if you're doing sewing and turning lots of corners, set your machine needle to land in the down position so that when you lift the foot to turn, it's already down. You don't have to use the hand wheel to get it in the down position before turning the corner. Sometimes when my sewing machine is at the resonant frequency of the table and the whole thing shakes. Which is really fucking annoying. That's my little pot holder with the hello with the little pocket bit which is cool i feel like it's it's way too big i should have made them smaller but i don't care i don't care after i had stitched on the little pocket part i decided to tidy up the edges with my ruler and my rotary cutter before i put the ribbon on around the outside Then I use my little clips to clip the ribbon on around the outside, around the outside, and yeah, then I went ahead and stitched it. If you if you are a sewist, you know how satisfying it is. So because I'm changing thread, I need to change the bobbin and I need to make a new bobbin. And I just took my bobbin out and there's literally like this much thread left on it. So it was about to run out and I'm just so glad I made it through all of that stitching without it running out because running out of bobbin is the fucking worst. Let's make a bobbin and then I'm going to do this ribbon bit. Obviously next I stitched the ribbon on. It wasn't a very wide ribbon so I think I only ended up stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric which was a little bit tight. At this point I didn't really care. As you can see when I turned the corner I kind of just fudged it. Whatever. So I just, I ran, my, my camera ran out of uh, memory, so I, 
I had to just delete a couple of things real quick. But I finished off doing the loop with the ribbon and I made it all the way around. I kind of wish that I had done 45 degree angle quilting rather than the weird 30 degree thing that I did because then that would maybe line up a bit better with the pocket part. But to finish off the, the loop, all I did was I came all the way around to the end. But before I got to the corner, I looped it back and I cut off what I needed. Then I looped, then I put it underneath. So I came all the way along and I stitched to about here, maybe an inch away from the end. I cut off what I needed for the ribbon and I threaded it back underneath and then I stitched to the corner and that's what gave me my loop, which I thought was pretty nifty. And that's the final product. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Here's the final result. I gotta say I'm pretty happy for an evening's work. You could call this a scrap buster project. The pocket works well. Obviously this is a reenactment of me using my oven, which I don't really use very often. I like my idea. I like my design. If you make some, let me know. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Bye.